Welcome, welcome, Travel Week readers. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited. We have an awesome webinar presentation planned for you all today. We have Renee and Sekou who are here from Grenada Tourism Authority, and they are going to share with you everything that's been going on and what's coming up for this year in Grenada. I can't wait to learn more with you all. Uh, just a few notes of housekeeping before we begin. Number one, there is an amazing prize attached to today's webinar, and that is a $100 Amazon gift card. Woohoo! So one lucky agent will be winning that prize today. And you will all be eligible as long as you stay through to the very end of today's webinar. We will choose a winner at random after the webinar is over and you can watch out for an email announcing who that winner is. Always as well, if you have questions during today's webinar, you can pop those into the Q&A box you see at the bottom. At the very end of today's webinar, I will be back on to answer any, ask any questions to Renee and Sekou on your behalf. So please use this time to get your questions answered and um, start getting ready to plan those amazing trips to Grenada for your clients. And so knowing that, without further ado, I would like to pass the floor over to Renee and Sekou and I will see you again at the end of the webinar. Take it away. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I see people are coming in slowly but surely. Uh, my name is Sekou Strode, and I represent the Grenada Tourism Authority here in Canada. And my colleague is uh, the lovely Rene Goodwin, who is based in Grenada. Lucky you. Yes. Lucky me indeed. Uh, what's the weather like down there? It is sunshiny and beautiful, blue skies, nice, cool sea breeze, perfection. Oh, oh my God. I wish oh, I was yeah, there. I wish I was for there. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so the, 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 the weather is uh, similar to the picture you're seeing on uh, the screen right now. You know, blue skies, just a little bit of uh, clouds overhead. Uh, if you look at my picture, you will see some islands in the distance. Uh, those islands are the Grenadine Islands because, you know, we are the gateway to the Grenadines. So this is just a teaser. Is uh this picture is taken on our Bartway Beach, which is on, on the north side of the island, and in the distance you can see the Grenadine Islands. So without further ado, I'm gonna go right into the presentation. In the end, we'll take questions, or actually June we'll take questions also. So please put it in the Q and A, and uh, we'll get to them as soon as possible. So that was just a tease about my beautiful island of Grenada, Caripo, and Petit Martinique. So for those of you who do not know, Grenada, we are located in the Southern Caribbean and we're below the hurricane belt. So feel, please feel free to send your clients to the island year round because usually the high hurricanes don't usually bother us uh, because we're located so far south. And uh, getting to Grenada uh, is quite easy actually. Uh, currently, there are five flights weekly from Toronto into Grenada. Air Canada has four flights weekly, uh, Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And those flights are going to be flying until the 31st of March. And then those four flights are going to be reduced to once weekly service from April 6th. And the four flights are going to resume again in November 1st. Okay, so currently four flights, then in the summertime, starting on April 6th, it's going to be one flight weekly on Saturdays and uh, resuming with the four flights in November on the 1st. So please uh, book Grenada. We have the flights. And of course, we want 
um, Air Canada to keep flying and we want them to increase their service. So next year, when we start negotiating flights, we want to negotiate two flights in the summertime. So we need to enlist your help to actually ensure that your clients actually utilize those flights this summer. So make sure that those flights are going down full to actually give us more ammunition when we get into Air Canada to negotiate next year that we can actually get two flights in the summertime. So that's very, very important. If that's one of the most, uh, the best takeaway you take away from today is please sell Grenada, recommend to your clients. It's a very safe island. It's a very, very easy to get to and there's something for everyone. And uh, also currently there is a one weekly flights with Sunwing leaving Grenada on Sundays, it's leaving Toronto on Sundays. So once weekly with Sundays, on Sundays with Sunwing, four times weekly with Air Canada. So Grenada, we're not only made up of one island, we are a three island destination. And uh, we are a geotourism destination. And by that, I mean, we are a destination that really believes in tourism that sustains you. All right, we have black and white sand beaches, waterfalls, crater lakes, sulfur springs. We have lush tropical rainforests with exotic flora and fauna. And of course, we are considered the ship shipwreck capital of the Caribbean. We have very healthy reefs and awesome wreck dives. And of course, we have very safe community-oriented culture. So we actually encourage your clients to leave the resort and just go out and explore the island. We really don't believe in a mega resort with over a thousand rooms. The largest hotel on the island are, is only 267 rooms. Rene will talk more about the hotels later. All right, but Grenada, we are really a family-oriented culture, very safe destination where we really, really want your clients to just explore, get lost. Uh, we are filled with beautiful, bountiful uh, vegetation. I always say you can throw a stone today, next week that stone becomes a boulder, come back in a month or two, that boulder becomes a mountain because the soil is so fertile. We have actually the highest graded spices and of course dark chocolate, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. Why is this? Yeah. So Grenada, we are made up of a three island destination, Grenada, Karakou and Piti Martinique. So Karakou is about an hour and a half by ferry from Grenada. And uh, usually the dolphin escort the ferry to Karakou. So in other islands, you would have to pay for dolphin excursions. But in Grenada, you take a ferry from Grenada to Karakou. Usually the dolphins, you would get that for free if the dolphins actually show up. So Karakou is located 23 miles north of Grenada. And uh, it's a size of only 13 square miles, a population of 8,000 people. And it's a very safe and laid back culture in Karakou as well. It's also known as the Isle of Reefs. So you can imagine the underwater sea life in Karakou is absolutely amazing and stunning. Everything you see in Grenada, you see in Karakou under the water. But in Karakou, because there are no rivers running off into the water, you know, the water is a little bit more clear than in Grenada. So the underwater sea life in Karakou is amazing. And the island is also very rich in West African culture and big drum dancing. And it's also home to the oyster bed mangrove, which is a pristine preserve on that island. Actually, one of the beaches on Karakou were actually named the best beach in the Caribbean by USA Today Top 10. The name of the beach is uh, Paradise Beach. And as the name suggests, it's paradise on that beach. Pristine white sand and very, very, very clear waters. You actually don't even have to go under the water to actually see some fishes. You can actually stay, just walk into the water and you can see some of the beautiful fishes just, you know, swimming alongside you. Really, really beautiful. And of course, we have our sister island of Piti Martinique. Piti Martinique is not even measured. It's so small, it's not measured in square miles. It's measured in acres. So Piti Martinique is 586 acres. And it has only 1,000 people live on that island. It's located 25 miles northeast of Grenada. And it's a very close-knit community-oriented culture in Piti Martinique also. Mind you, Piti Martinique should not be mistaken with Martinique, which is French, right? Piti Martinique belongs to Grenada and is English-speaking. And of course, they're very rich in boat building culture. Both Karakou and Piti Martinique are very, very rich in the boat building culture in Grenada. All right, it, yeah. So lots of the boats that you would see traversing the Eastern Caribbean or the Southern Caribbean are actually built in Grenada in, in Karakou and Piti Martinique. Because the Scottish, when they actually um, settled in Karakou and Piti Martinique in the colonial times, they actually brought their boat building culture. So up to today, boat building is a very, very big deal in those smaller islands of Karakou and Piti Martinique.
So in Grenada, it's pure nature, like a real tropical paradise. One ninth of our landmass is preserved as parks, and we have a plethora of waterfalls. We have waterfalls you can hike to, or waterfalls you can just step out of your cars and be at. All right, excellent hiking trails. We have natural sulfur and boiling springs. We actually have a waterfall that is called Golden Falls. And what makes this waterfall unique, which is like about a 45 minute hike. But when you get to that waterfall, it is the cascading waters from the mountain is actually cold water. But because it's located in a spring, it's also sulfur spring. So the spring itself is a bit hot. So you get the best of both worlds. Cold water coming from the Cascading Mountains and actually in the pond itself, you get some nice hot water coming from the spring. We also have excellent, we have seven of the gardens listed in the UK's Book of 100 Best Gardens. So even though Grenada is so small, we really pack a big punch because like you can imagine, seven of the UK's Book of the 100 Best Gardens and that's best gardens in the world, Grenada has seven of those and we are a very, very small island. So just consider that when you're thinking about sending all your nature lovers to the island of Grenada, it is a nature's lover paradise. And of course, we are the gateway to the Grenadines. What usually people do, the yachties, they would actually sail into Grenada, uh, fly into Grenada, and they would charter a yacht, or they would get a bare boat charter, or they would get someone to charter their yachts, and they can just sail up the Grenadines from Grenada. Uh, Karaku and Piti Martinique are also some Grenadine Islands, but it's, Karaku is a, considered the largest Grenadine Islands. It does not belong to St. Vincent, but Karaku and Piti Martinique are Grenadine Islands, and Karaku is the largest of the Grenadine Islands. So the Grenadine Islands starts from Karaku, go up north. So in Grenada, we have a wealth of sheltered anchorages and year-round good weather, and we have super marinas capable of housing 90-meter yachts. And our calendar is really packed with regattas and sailing festivals and work boat regattas in Karaku, in Grenada, and in Piti Martinique. So in Grenada, love really blossoms on this island. All right, it's a perfect destination for, uh, for adventure seekers and also for wedding and honeymoons. You can get 24-hour marriage license. And uh, because we think outside of the box, we try to make your wedding day very, very me memorable. So you can actually, actually have underwater weddings or you can get married in coconut fiber and river stone wedding gowns. Because again, we like to think outside of the box. And because Grenada, we are filled with lots of secluded um, beaches all around. We have over 45 beaches, both black and white sand beaches. Like you can stumble upon a beach and that beach becomes your you and that's your significance others beach for the day without anyone else around. All right, and it's a very safe island too. So you don't have to worry about, you know, if someone else comes on the beach, you know, they may, you know, become your friend. You know, Grenada is a kind of destination where a visitor, it's not uncommon to see a visitor on someone's veranda having a drink or having coffee. Like it's a very, very common place. So in Grenada also, it's soft adventure, pure excitement. Uh, we are a perfect destination for adventure seekers and uh, nature lovers. We have a wide network of nature trails, great for hiking. And you can go river tubing down the Balthazar River. You can go kayaking through oyster mangrove beds, uh, protective sheltered reefs also. We have the On the Water Sculpture Park, which is the first in the world. And also you can go hiking. So Grenada really has something for everyone. If you are a beach lover, we have, Pity, uh, we have Paradise Beach on our sister island of Karakou. And we have our Grand Dance Beach, which was named the best beach in the world by Condé Nast Travelers Magazine. All right, so beaches in abundance. So every single day of most of your clients' vacation, they can actually be on a different beach if they are beach lovers. So adventure seekers, we have something for everyone when it comes to adventures. River tubing, kayaking, paddle boating, diving, hiking, and I can go on and on and on and on and on. And of course, I told you about the Underwater Sculpture Park and our excellent diving um, options. We are a twin island dive destination because I just told you about our sister island of Karaku, which is an awesome dive uh, destination. In Grenada, we have over 50 sites and 20 wreck dives. And you may say, why do we have so many wrecks? Is the water rough? No, the water isn't rough. Uh, we try sinking uh, a wreck almost every year. Because the premise behind that is be whenever you sink a ship, wait two or three years, that ship 
coral start growing on the ship. And when the corals start growing, the sea life moves in because lots of the sea life, they like to eat the corals. All right, so they depend on the corals to, to, to get their nutrition. So we try sinking a wreck on, uh, annually, and that's also the premise behind the underwater sculptures. We recently added a 31 different, uh, sculptures to the underwater sculpture park. And the underwater sculpture park, you can see them while you snorkel or scuba dive from a glass bottom boat. I'm not a diver myself, but whenever I do this underwater sculpture park, I actually snorkel to see them. And as you can see, the lady here, she is actually doesn't have a tank on her back, so she's a snorkeler as well. So she could, she's actually free diving down to the sculptures. So the 30 additional sculptures are our coral carnival. And those sculptures are actually um, sculpted. So some of our carnival um, costumes. So we have a jab jab, we have a, someone dressed up in a pretty mask costume and also a shortney. Um, you would know more about the shortneys and those other people that I'm gonna discuss later on in the presentation as well. During our carnival, what's coming up. So we are a real perfect dive destination. And uh, we are considered the wreck capital of the Caribbean. And we also, in addition to the underwater sculpture park, we have the largest wreck dive in the Caribbean, which is the Bianca Sea. The Bianca Sea sunk off the coast of Grenada in the 60s when the engine room caught fire. All right. Only one person passed away on that, on that uh, boat who was the engineer in the engine room at the time. Everyone else was saved by the local Grenadians. When they saw the, the boat on fire, they all jumped in their fishing boats and their yachts and they saved everyone else on board. All right. And one thing that makes Grenada really unique also is most of our dive sites are located within 10 to 20 minutes away from the shore. So you can actually take more time actually diving as opposed to actually getting to the dive site. Some people actually do two dives. They do a morning dive and they come back to the hotel for lunch and they go back out in the afternoon and do nighttime uh, afternoon dives. Some dive shops also offer nighttime diving as well. So Grenada is a perfect dive destination. Uh, we have a year-round warm weather. The water temperature is usually about 28 degrees Celsius. So some things to do on the island. You can go kayaking, paddleboarding. There's excellent rum tours. Actually, we actually have the largest, the oldest, sorry, rum distillery in the Western Hemisphere. The, the name of that distillery is Rivers Rum. And they still use a water wheel to crush the sugar cane to actually uh, make the to actually make the rum. They still actually bottle all of the bottles of rum by hand. So you walk into that rum distillery and you think that you're back in the colonial ages. It's, this is if you're gonna go on a rum tour on an island tour, I recommend that if your clients are into rum, this is a really cool tour to actually take them on. We also have historic uh, scenic tours. Uh, this is here is a, a fort. The forts were actually built by the French when because the island changed hands quite a few times in the colonial time. Uh, so the island was both French and English. So the French actually bought um, built the forts. And up to today, most of the villages and most of the street names are French. So you have La Sagesse, you have Montjalou, you have Lansapine. Even our world famous Grand Dance Beach is French. Okay. In addition to that, we have our street food Wednesdays. Uh, this is a dodgy dock, and it's uh, where all the local vendors they were invited onto the into the um, into the restaurant of the Chublu Bay Resort, and there is live entertainment, and all the vendors are just selling lots of food. This is a must do for any of your clients that are in Grenada, even if they do, are not staying at the Chublu Bay Resort. I recommend that they actually attend the Street Food Wednesday. It ends up being the highlight of lots of people's trips. And of course, what's not coming to Grenada without buying? visiting the spice market. All right, Grenada, we are home to the best spices in the world, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, you name it, Grenada has it. The island literally smells like spices. You get off the plane and you smell the aroma of the spices in the air. So some accolades. Uh, our best beach in the Caribbean, Paradise Beach has won that uh, by USA Today Top 10. And our Belmont Estate actually won the Caribbean's best attraction, Caribbean Journal, named as the culinary capital, culinary destination of the year in 2022. And of course, our underwater sculpture park was named one of the 25 wonders of the world, Earth's most amazing places. Additionally, some other accolades, we were named the world's first culinary capital by the World Food and Travel Association, as well as uh, Calabash, uh, luxury boutique hotel and spa was named number one luxury hotel in the Caribbean by TripAdvisor. 
And of course, we have won over 13 consecutive gold medals at the Chelsea's Flower Show. So again, like I said, the soil is so fertile in Grenada, everything just grows and they grow in abundance. So some festivals that's coming up. Uh, we have our carnival, which is, we, co we coin it Spice Mass because of course we are the Spice Island. So our carnival is usually clim climaxes the second weekend in August. And during our carnival, like it's uh, over a month of activities, but it really climaxes the second weekend in August when they have, when the streets are taken over by masqueraders. Masqueraders in pretty costumes, dancing behind trucks with playing soca music, calypso music, and it's just a lot of clean fun. So there's a day for pretty mask. There's also a day for jab, jab, juvie, as you can see the picture in the middle of the screen here. And that's someone, do you know what jab, jab is a party that starts at three o'clock in the morning and it goes up until 10 in the afternoon, 10 on the morning. So the locals, they would uh, bathe themselves in oil or some people like uh, painting themselves in different color paints and they would just be on the streets, chanting, bottle and spoon with different rhythms. And of course, trucks playing soca music, lots of rum is flowing and it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. So if you have any clients that are party animals, I would recommend they come to Grenada for carnival. And of course we have the short knees. You see the people on the right hand side of the screen uh, that's faces are covered and uh, wearing some big puffy clothes. Uh, these are the short knees, a traditional mask, and they have powder in their hand. They would run around the streets and they would have powder in their hands and they would fling the powder in the air and they would go around chanting to different rhythms. So Grenada, our carnival is pure fun, very safe fun. And I would implore again that your client, you send your clients to Grenada during our carnival. We have a day that is a queen show. So the carnival, cost, um, the ladies would parade on the on the stage with the, of course, it's like Miss World or Miss Universe. You know, there's question asking, there's a, um, they have different um, talents to do. They have evening where they will actually model. We have a Calypso competition. And of course, we have a steel band competition. So again, in, in Grenada, we are Tree Island and on our sister island of Karaku, we have the annual Maroon and String Band Music Festival that takes place on the 26th to the 28th of April. So it's three days and three venues, and it's really a beautiful festival. And it's focused on Thanksgiving and giving praise. You know, there are lots of events for dancing, cultural performances, lots of amazing food as well. There are the venues are on the beach. There's some venues are in uh, an old plantation on the uh, on the premises of an old plantation house. And uh, it's just a lot, a lot of fun on the sister island of Karaku. Lots of cultural performers. Uh, come from so, some of the regional islands that they come down to Grenada to actually perform at the Karaku Marina String Band Music Festival. So, and of course, we have our chocolate festival because in Grenada we have seven chocolate factories, and each of those factories make a variety between five and 15 different flavors of chocolate. So, in Grenada, during a chocolate festival, it's like Willy Wonka's Island. You can eat, drink, and bathe in chocolate, like it's a chocolate paradise. And you can have chocolate facials, chocolate spa sessions, chocolate rum, chocolate bear. You can bathe in chocolate. Like, yeah, you can have real chocolate. I'm not talking about the chocolate you would get at Safeway or at Loblaws, right? I'm talking about the real hot chocolate. Uh, you can get chocolate ice cream. Like, there's a chocolate making uh, session. There's a bean to bar toy you can take. You can make your own chocolate. Like, it's everything chocolate during the chocolate festival. And it takes place this year from May 17th to the 19th. So if you have any clients that are chocolate lovers, or foodies, I recommend that you send them to Grenada, to Grenada Chocolate Festival. And you yourself, the agents, we, we recommend that you come down year round. Uh, because there's definitely something for you to do year round. And of course, being a dive destination, we have our dive and conservation fest. Uh, previously, it was only a dive fest, but we decided we're actually going to pair it to the conservation aspect. You know, because in Grenada, we really believe in giving back to the environment and making sure that the environment is really pristine and clear. All right. So we have the Dive and Conservation Fest that takes place on the between September 13th to the 23rd. There's a day you go diving in Karakou. There's uh, days for uh, shipwreck diving. There's days for reef diving. You know, so please come to Grenada if you're interested in the Dive and Conservation Fest. We have it annually. And this year is going to be on the 13th to the 23rd of September. And again, like I said earlier on, most of the diving sites are located within 20 minutes from the shore. So lots of the divers would not have to take a long time actually getting to the dive site. They would take more time actually diving on the destination. 
And of course, I would come on to accommodation. And here is where I turn it over to my lovely colleague, Renee, in Grenada. It's my turn! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to keep up with... Um... The Q&As, there's a lot of really good ones in here. Um, so we will address those later. But yes, I am going to go over some of our accommodation options. So in Grenada, we like to say that there is something for everyone. We have a type of accommodation for every type of traveler, you know, super romantic places, um, family friendly, you know, places that are good for solo travelers um, and so on and so forth. You know, from bread, bed, bed and breakfasts, we have inns, guest houses, full service luxury resorts. So I'm going to go through these. Um, Seiko, next. Oh yes, great, but first, before I do that, um, let me talk about uh, some new developments. We have actually quite a few um, new hotels coming on stream. So our room stock is going to increase significantly, which is very good for us, of course. Um, Six Senses is located in La Suggest, St. David. Um, it's going to have 124 rooms. They're doing a soft opening here in the next few months. Um, Beach House, which is a sister resort of Silver Sands, which is our huge, you know, super luxury um, resort here on island. Beach House is kind of like a smaller, more family friendly uh, version of Silver Sands. Um, located on um, a beach in the south, a really nice one. Um, it's going to have 31 rooms, so they have already done a soft opening as well. Speaking of, so Silver Sands is a five-star virtuoso property. It is stunning. Like when I say stunning, I mean, from the time you walk in to the main lobby, it's like the, the, the longest pool in the Eastern Caribbean is laid out in front of you against the backdrop of Grand Ants Beach. It's all, it's very much like a wow moment. Several celebrities um, come to Grenada to stay at this resort. Um, we've had celebrity weddings take place there. It really is. It's truly, truly spectacular. It has 43 standard suites and nine luxury villas, a glorious spa. Oh my God, the spa is amazing. Um, and two dining options, as well as a super high class cigar and rum lounge. And it is a member of the leading hotels of the world. Spice Island Beach Resort is another one of our super luxury resorts. This one is locally family owned. Um, it's been around for about 30 years. Um, it is an all-inclusive six-star diamond award recipient. It has 64 beautifully elegant suites and a full service spa. I actually literally just went to their spa the other day for a oh. massage. I got a gift certificate for my birthday. It was one of my best sure. birthday presents. It was amazing. It is also virtuoso property and it's located on Grand Ants Beach and they have their own dive shop as well. And since it is family owned, you know, they really focus on making you feel like family as well. The service there is exceptional. Sandals, I'm sure this is one that you all recognize. Um, this Sandals is lovely. It's located on Pink Gin Beach in the South. It has 257 rooms and suites. Um, super innovative, you know, their sky pool suites are very popular. They have over 10 dining options and it's just, you know, you know what we, what we, we all know what to expect from sandals and you definitely get it here times 10. Um, another name that we're all familiar with, uh, the Royalton Grenada, it is five minutes away from the airport. It actually is located on two white sand beaches. So that's pretty cool. It has 267 rooms, great conference facilities, um, Wi-Fi throughout the entire resort, eight restaurants with reservation-free dining. They have a kids club, you know, they have activities all day long. It's a really, really, really nice property on very lovely grounds. It has nice gardens. It has like cool um, ponds with like little kissing bridges, lots of birds, lots of like wildlife, iguanas, things like that roaming around. It's very cool, very nice property. And Calabash is my personal favorite, as Seiku knows. It is a luxury boutique hotel and spa. It has been voted the number one luxury hotel in the Caribbean in 2019 by TripAdvisor. Um, it, this is a local family owned um, hotel as well that has also been around for about 30 years. Um, they do a lovely breakfast service, um, served either on the beach or on your private balcony. All 47 suites have a sea view and Calabash really also focuses on service excellence. 
The staff there is top notch. Um, they have a very low staff turnover. Most of them have been there since the resort opened. So it really does feel like home when you go there. The welcome is fantastic. Um, it is beachfront. It's located on Lansapine Beach and it has its own dive shop as well. So lots of water sports included. Next, Seiko. La Luna. La Luna is lovely. Oh, La Luna is great. It's very much like a kind of bohemian Caribbean um, property, but like high end. Um, it has 26 uh, rooms overlooking uh, Portici Beach, a le very lovely beach. It's in a secluded location, so it's perfect for romantic getaways, laid back holidays. Um, it has an amazing Asian spa with Balinese therapists. They have an open air um, yoga pavilion where they also do outdoor movie nights. My personal favorite thing about La Luna though is A, the food there is amazing. Um, and also they have an enchanted forest, which basically is, so basically the, the forest on the property is full of like sculptures and different artwork. And at night it's all lit up and they have a wishing tree where you can write a wish on a ribbon and tie it on the tree. So it's all very visually stimulating, like very beautiful. They have a new bar that they just opened, the monkey bar, which is within the Enchanted Forest. So it's really, it's a lot of fun. It's a very fun resort. Say who? <laughs> uh, Radisson, another name that we're all going to recognize. Um, this resort is very large. This has our biggest conference facilities on the island. Um, for those of you that are in, you know, um, the MICE space. It's 229 room resorts, also located on Grand Anse Beach. It has its own dive shop. It has a beautiful swim up bar with a waterfall pool, um, professional tennis courts, fully equipped gym. Now, I know you've heard me mention a lot of hotels on Grand Anse Beach, but I wanna assure you guys, Grand Anse Beach is never crowded. Like even during cruise ship season, all of the cruise ship passengers, it's like they they kind of stick to one end of the beach. And that is by design because, you know, we want Grand Anse Beach to remain as it is. And even though, I mean, me as a local, every time I go to Grand Anse Beach, I can find a tree to sit under. You know, you can have your own space. It's not super crowded ever unless there is literally an event on the beach. Um, like, for example, two weekends ago, they had the workboat regatta. So all the, all the workboats from the different villages and stuff. Uh, we're sailing from Grand Anse Beach. So unless there's something like that, I mean, Grand Anse Beach is really and truly yours. What do you got next for me? Koyaba is also on Grand Anse Beach. <laughs> um, this is a local family owned hotel as well, 80 room um, resort. They also have their own dive shop. They have an excellent tennis court that was just refurbished, fully equipped gym, um, and it has conference facilities as well. And this is very much like a traditional Caribbean resort that has lovely gardens as well and great beachfront. Blue Horizons Garden Resort is another locally owned um, property that we have here. It is almost like a sister property of Spice Island Beach Resort. The owners are brothers or the owners are family. Um, they are Green Globe Gold certified. They focus a lot on sustainability and on being environmentally conscious. They are literally a bird sanctuary. Um, they are a haven to 27 species of tropical birds. And one of the activities that they offer there are you get to go bird watching and go on garden walks. Um, it's 32 self-catering um, apartment style rooms. Um, it's centrally located. So it's not on a beach, but it is directly across from Grand Anse Beach. So literally a three minute walk over to the beach um, lots of other great restaurants and shopping, supermarkets, things like that, bars, et cetera, are within walking distance of Blue Horizons. And of course, it's in a very safe neighborhood. And they are too service oriented, you know, family owned and operated. So you really get that, you know, home away from home type of feeling. Mount Cinnamon is glorious. Oh my gosh, Mount Cinnamon is so colorful, chic Caribbean vibe. It is 30 room resort. It's located on both a hill and beachfront as well. So like the rooms and the rooms and the suites and the villas are on the hillside. And then you have a nice garden walk and the beach club is on the beach. Um, so they do complimentary breakfast. They have two restaurants, one on the beach and one in the main area. They also have their own dive shop. 
um, fitness facilities, tennis, non-motorized water sports, all complimentary. And every view of every room in Mount Cinema is this picture here. It is stunning when you walk into their rooms and you see that view laid out of, in front of you. It's, you know, it's, it's wild. It's so, it's such a wild moment, you know? True Blue Bay, oh my gosh, another one of my favorites. This one is also um, locally family owned and operated. It is very fun, very family oriented. The, they are also the founders of the Grenada Chaco Festival. Um, so they are a mixture of 70 rooms, suites, and villas. They have beautiful gardens. They have um, one of Grenada's best dive shops located on property. Um, they are not on a beach. They are on a bay. However, they do offer complimentary shuttles every day to different beaches uh, um, in Grenada. And they are maybe about no more than 10 minutes away from any of the popular beaches in Grenada. Um, as I mentioned, they're very family friendly. So they have playgrounds on property. Uh, they have a great spa, great open air yoga pavilion. Um, and they do lots of really fun activities. Like every day they have different activities. They have local cooking classes. They do a street food village on Wednesdays with live music. Um, they have other theme nights and they're very heavy on live music and entertainment. So it's a very fun resort. Like I definitely recommend this one for like young people and families. Oh, staying connected. Yes, please stay in touch with us. Follow us on all of the things. We have a great Instagram profile, super interesting. We like to highlight a lot of, you know, local things, local personalities, culture, things like that. Um, so we are Pure Grenada on Instagram and Facebook. So please check us out and follow us. And of course, we have our specialist program, but Seiko, I feel like this is your baby. Do you want to tell them about this one? Yeah, so the specialist program, uh, we really, really would like you guys to, you know, become a Grenada specialist, earn rewards. Uh, we have lots of different prizes that we give away on a monthly basis, you know, for people who have uh, uh, logged the most bookings to Grenada. We have a grand prize at the end of the year for a trip for two to Grenada. We are, you actually actually um, win opportunities to come on farms when we have them. And uh, of course, cash prizes. Um, so it's just be, you know, active and we update you all the time. You get on our newsletter. So I really implore you to actually become a Grenada specialist at expo.puregrenada.com. Become a Grenada specialist, log your bookings. That's the only way we, we are going to be able to, you know, put your name down for fans to see how you're selling us. Um, so please, you know, again, become a Grenada specialist, log your bookings. We encourage you all to sell Grenada. We need that flight in the summertime to continue to fly. So please book, book, book Grenada. Happy selling. And Renee, back to you. <laughs> Um, this is our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to us if you ever have any questions. Um, there are still a few open questions here. Um, oh, somebody said, oh, Dominique said, I will do the specialist program. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Shara said she sold. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you want me to go through the questions, Candice, or do you want to? Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to go through them, and then Renee, okay. if you, you want to answer them, um, we can go through. And then I know you answered a lot already, Renee. So yeah. um, at the end, if there's any of those questions that you would be think it would it would be great for all of our consultants to hear the answers to today, we can go okay. through that. Too. Um, I I actually I can actually do that. Um, I think one that I got a few times was what's the best time of year to visit. Yes. I personally truly believe that Grenada is a year round destination. I don't want, you know, the idea of rainy season to put people off. Rainy season is June to December, but in Grenada, generally what we experience is it may rain very heavily for like five minutes and then it just passes and the sun comes back out. And, you know, so I don't want that to deter people. And then as Seiko mentioned, as we're geographically located below the hurricane belt, you can travel here during hurricane season, which is June to December, and not have to worry about, you know, Grenada being struck by a huge storm. Um, it is it is extremely rare. Um, yes. So, yeah, I if I were planning a trip to Grenada, I would plan it to coincide with, like, one of our festivals or something like that, you know, because there's just a lot more to do. Unless, of course, you're coming to chill. In which case, you know, come any time of the year because we really truly are a year-round destination. 
Um, I guess if you wanted to come in low season, um, that would be considered September and October. Okay. Okay, great. That's great information for your clients, travel consultants, just knowing what um, your clients prefer, if they want something more lively, like a festival, or like Renee was saying, they want to just come and chill. There are other times when it is even a little bit more quiet, but it sounds like um, the beaches here are not busy, as they were saying. So mm -hmm. you can still get that R and R year round. So that's amazing. Yep. Um. Great. Okay. Um. This is this this question comes from Anita, and she's asking mainly about the spices, like nutmeg. Um. Why is Grenada known for as a spice island? Um, I personally think that it's because we are a volcanic island, so our soil is extremely fertile. Um, that's kind of what I was always kind of taught growing up. We literally have a saying in Grenada that like, you, you know, drop any seed in the ground and it will grow. And it's true. Um, I mean, I have like, you know, one area of my backyard, but like we just throw seeds and vegetables. I'm like, literally things sprout that's like amazing. crazy. Um, so yeah, I would have to say that it is our, our soil, the fact that we are vo a volcanic island and it's very mineral rich. Grenada has also lots of sulfur springs, um, you know, that have like all these different min minerals that are great for your skin. People go there and do masks and like all kinds of stuff. So I would attribute it to that. Awesome. Thank you for that answer. We had a few agents on here asking a little bit about the food culture, um, particularly for those consultants who have clients who are, let's say, vegetarian or something like that. Um, are there going to be options there for them? Tons of options. It has really, I would say the vegetarian and vegan like movement has really uh, grown a lot in Grenada recently. Um, and then also, of course, you know, we do have Rastafarian culture here, which is mostly ITAL, so mostly vegetarian and vegan. So yes, almost everywhere you go will have vegetarian options for sure. Awesome. Thank you for that answer. We had a few consultants as well asking about a little bit more about accommodations. Renee, you did a great presentation on um covering yeah no it was great you covered so much um we some travel agents were asking about all-inclusive resorts and then versus like bed and breakfast it seems like Grenada um has like some all-inclusives but it's not their focus as you were saying yeah did yes. you want to expand um, on that no yeah you are correct um and that's because most of our properties in Grenada are as I mentioned family owned we have only a handful of global brands here. Um, but however, I, I do want, you know, agents to be aware, you can reach out to a property and ask them what your options are. Because for example, True Blue, you know, or even Mount Cinnamon, you know, while their default is B&B, &B, if you reach out to them and you want a full meal plan, they will work with you on that. And, you know, you know, we have the flexibility to do that because, you know, the resorts are, you know, family owned. So just a matter of, you know, some communication, um, but our only like real all inclusive, all inclusives are, I would say, like Spice, Sandals, um, Royalty, even Radisson. Radisson's default is BNB, but they will do a full meal plan for you if you ask. So really and truly, once you reach out, um, you can, you know, depending on the on the resort, most are able to do all inclusive. But again, because Grenada has so many great restaurants, I think that's another reason why as well, you know, as Seiku said, you know, as as a nation, you know, we want people to go out and experience things and try different restaurants and try different food and meet different people and, and stuff like that. So um, I would say that's just kind of what our national profile is. Yeah, yeah definitely. To reiterate, to reiterate what uh, Renee was saying, most of the resorts, they do offer all inclusive options, uh, but because they're family owned, they prefer you to go out and, you know, eat at the local restaurants. It's safe to do so on the the variety is like 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 it's it 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 is amazing and the food is amazing of the resort. All right, so um yeah, I I encourage everyone to to leave the resort. But if you are interested in all inclusive, the re most of the hotels do have the option. Yeah, thank you for that answer. And I think lots of our consultants, you know, they have clients who all inclusives are more than thing their thing, but then they have clients who it's the complete opposite. And then also that's what makes Grenada such a great option for both. That's right. Yeah. Um, I see a question on here from Debbie. Is it necessary to rent a car or is it easy to access local yeah. restaurant sites by taxi? Um, if you're comfortable driving on the left side of the road, 
I do recommend renting a car because it's nice to be able to explore. We have lots of great taxis. Um, public transportation is not on a set schedule, but it is fairly easy to use. Um, it's just not like, okay, you know, you, you can be like, okay, well, a Grand Aunt's bus is coming at one o'clock at one fifteen at like, it's not organized like that. They just kind of run continuously, you know, throughout the day. Um, so if you're comfortable driving, I say rent a car. If not, you know, we have lots of, you know, super reliable um, taxi operators who you can literally book for your entire stay and literally just be like, okay, well today I want to do a waterfall and they will take you to a waterfall. And they will be your guy or your gal <laughs> the entire time that you're there. Uh, you know, so there's, so it just depends on your personal preference, you know? Because also, I mean, for me, for example, even though I'm comfortable driving wherever, I do not want to drive on vacation, period. <laughs> like I want to be driven. <laughs> so it just depends on personal preference. Yes, excellent. Thank you for that answer, Renee. Um, we have an agent asking about the ferry Um what is the cost of the Karaku ferry? How so, often? Um, I cannot do this conversion. Seiko probably can. I cannot do math in my head. But it is um, $160 round trip, and it runs every single day except Sunday. Okay, awesome. Yeah, Thank and it's you. about an hour and a half. Very right. So it's like 80 Great. Canadian. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. There, there. Oh. Awesome. Excellent. Um, somebody asked if we have a casino culture. No, we don't. We do not. We do not. Um, this yep, and then we also have a large beach. So it's not long, but um, but it's 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 fairly wide. And there's two. There's one on each side of the resort, basically. Okay, excellent. Um, we definitely have a lot of travel agents on here who are excited about the specialist course. Um yes. Yeah, Pam was saying she has just booked four friends into the Royalton for April 6th, and she's really yes. excited to take the specialist course. And another agent um, was mentioning the specialist course as well. Yeah. Um, Seiku, you were also talking about um, our consultants being eligible for FAMS when they take the special specialist course. Is there any um, coming up or any agent rates that travel consultants can also have access to once they take the specialist course? Yeah, so um, on the specialist course, once they take it and they log their bookings, uh, they are agent rates at most of the hotels. Uh, so just reach out to the hotel themselves, or you can reach out to me, and I can get the yeah. agent rates for you. Uh, the fans, I do not have one off the bat that I'm planning currently, you know. But uh, in whenever you do log your bookings, depending on where you place in those logs and how many clients you send to Grenada, once you're on the top of that list, you know you would be eligible to come on that fan. So again, it's really, really important for you to log your bookings, you know, so we could actually have an eye for who's actually booking Grenada the most to reward them with a farm so they can get more intimate with the, the destination in order to sell them a, a little better. Excellent. That's a great answer. And um, thank you for that information for our consultants. Um, beyond that, it looks like the rest of what's on here are just comments, um, excellent presentation, um, some travel consultants hoping for um, Sunday departures for honeymooners. And I know Seiku, as you were saying um, earlier in the presentation, book those trips and um, then the demand for air goes up. So That's right. um, yes, Girl. yes. Thank you for um, saying that. Um, yeah. And so I guess um, we can, um, is there anything else you would like to say before we sign off today? Anything like else you'd like to add for our travel consultants? Um, I think for me, I just wanted to say, you know, when you guys are booking people to Grenada, any questions that you have about things to do, or you want to know a reliable taxi driver or, you know, whatever the case is, please reach out to Seiko and I, that is literally what we're here for, you know? Yeah. Excellent. Um, Seiko, maybe you want to just, exactly. That's what I was just yeah. thinking. There, <laughs> there, yeah. there yeah. you yeah. go. Yeah. And I, I would also like to reiterate the flights again. You know, it's all about the flights right now. Last year, we did not have summer service. With, and this year, we do have summer service once a week with Air Canada starting April the 6th on Saturdays until the end of October. And then the direct flights, which are going to be four weekly in November, restarts. So I would just like to reiterate that please book Grenada. Please recommend Grenada to your clients. 
because next year we want to start negotiating with Air Canada and the, those negotiations would actually center around a, increasing the capacity from one flight in the summertime to two flights in the summertime so your clients have more options. So please, um, please, please book Grenada. Um, there's something for everyone. It's a safe island and uh, we are welcoming visitors and also to travel agents. Whenever you are planning trips to Grenada, you're on a cruise or if you are actually on a land-based vacation, please reach out to myself or Renee because we do have a courtesy, um, a courtesy island tour that we would extend to travel agents who are Grenada specialists. Uh, so please reach out to us and we'll give you an island tour again, courtesy the Grenada Tourism Authority. So in that way, you actually get to visit some of the sites on us with a very, very reputable tour guide. And uh, again, you'll be in a better position to sell the destination on your return back to Canada. Those are excellent points, Seku. Um, and yes, as you were saying, it truly does seem that there is something for everyone here at this destination. So travel consultants, when you're thinking of where to book next in terms of sun destination for your clients, this is an amazing option uh, with so many, so many, so many options for the any type of client that you've got. That's definitely what I'm seeing from this presentation here. So again, thank you, Renee and Sekou and Grenada Tourism yeah. Authority for being here today and for sharing with all our consultants. I'd also like to just say congratulations to all the consultants who have stayed through to the end. You are now eligible to win the $100 gift card that goes along with this webinar. So stay tuned for a follow-up where you will get a link to the recording of this video and we'll announce the prize winner there as well. Seku, Renee, Renee Tourism Authority, again, thank you so, so much for being here you. and for presenting to our travel agents today. Thank so you. Everybody have a thank great you. afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank all you. Right. And travel all, guys. Bye. Yes, thank you all for being here. Take care and until next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> right, Happy booking. Bye.